Now we're learning the chain rule. So it's another rule for how to differentiate functions that aren't just the sum of successive functions. So we've learned the product rule, and that teaches us how to differentiate when we have two functions multiplied together, or the product of two functions. The quotient rule tells us how to differentiate when we have two functions divided by each other, or quotients of each other, right? The chain rule tells us what to do when we have the composition of two functions, so one function inside of another function. Now there's this thing that a lot of people use called the general power rule, which is one way to do the chain rule for very, very simple chain rule problems. What I'll say though is I feel like it only works in very small instances and most of the time it doesn't work. So I am not going to teach you the general power rule. If you'd like to learn the general power rule, I always link videos to another teacher that teaches out of the same book as us, if you remember. You're welcome to watch his video on the general power rule and um, understand how it works. It's just not something that I feel like is worth memorizing because we have so much to remember already. The chain rule works every single time, so we're just going to do the chain rule. But here's what the chain rule is. Basically, the idea behind the chain rule is you have a peanut M&M. So here I have, let's see if I can find a good, a good peanut color. When I'm eating a peanut M&M, I have a peanut, and then I have the chocolate and the candy shell on the outside, right? That was supposed to be blue. Oh yeah, it shows up blue for you guys. Okay, when I eat this peanut M&M, what happens? Well, first, I eat the outside, and the peanut stays intact, okay? So I eat the outside, but the peanut is still just the peanut, right? Still totally there. Then I eat the peanut, okay? So you're like, how does it have to do with anything? This is the way the chain rule works. Inside this function, there's my peanut color. Okay, so f of x is like the chocolate on the outside, and g of x is like the peanut on the inside. So when I want to differentiate this function, I eat the peanut first, not the peanut, I eat the chocolate first, so I differentiate the chocolate first, but the peanut stays intact. Then I eat the peanut, or I differentiate the peanut. Okay, this is the product, or this is the chain rule. f prime of g of x times g prime of x. The derivative of a composite function, you eat the outside first and leave the peanut intact, then you eat the peanut, and it's all multiplied together. So let's look at how this is actually applied. So first we have this, this function. So we have to define what our functions are. I'm going to pick a slightly different color peanut so that it's a little darker for you guys. I'll pick a little darker M&M as well. Okay, so what is the outside function? The outside function is this, you know, something squared, right? And the inside function is x squared minus 3. Hmm, that does not look good. You cannot read that. Okay, so I could say um, my outside function is something squared. My inside function is x squared minus 3. That is a really ugly peanut color. It does not look like a peanut. Okay, so we differentiate the outside first. So what is the derivative of something squared? It's 2 to the first power, right? If this was just like x squared, it would be 2x to the first power. So I differentiate the outside and I leave the inside intact. I don't touch the inside. That peanut is still there. Now I multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. So then I can just simplify this out and I end up with 4x times x squared minus 3. And that's the derivative. We can multiply it out. We could have 4x cubed minus 12x we don't have to. Do you see how this is so much easier than multiplying this all out, multiplying x squared minus 3 times x squared minus 3, and then differentiating it? Because that's what we would have had to do, because it's a function inside of a function. We would have had to multiply it all out before. Okay, and I should, again, I'm, 
I forget to be precise, but we always need to be precise. If I find the derivative, I need to be saying that I'm finding the derivative. Okay, next, what? It's three functions. Or is it? You have the square root, you have the cube, and you have the function inside. But guess what? Isn't the square root of something cubed just, couldn't we rewrite this as g of x equals 2x squared minus x to the 3 halves? Yes, we could. Now, the chain rule can be done multiple times. We could have done it multiple times, but it's so much easier just to rewrite it. Now we only have two functions, right? So the outer function is the something to the 3 halves, and the inside the peanut is 2x squared minus x. All right, so let's differentiate. So g prime, whoa, g prime of x is 3 halves times something, and we subtract one from that and it becomes 1 half. Okay, the peanut stays intact, so it stays in there. And then we multiply by the peanut, the derivative of the peanut, which is 4x minus 1. And again, we could just leave it just like that. We don't have to do anything else. If you were crazy, you could, but uh, why? That's your derivative. Okay. This one is tricky because you just want to start like differentiating and then you realize this is the product rule because it's two functions multiplied together. And then this is the chain rule as well. So how do we do this? Well, we know that the product rule is fig plus gif, right? So let's see if we can find fig and gif. So if f of x is 3x squared, then the derivative of that would be 6x. And then if g of x is the cube root of 9 minus 4x squared, then what's the derivative of that? That's when we need the chain rule, right? So I start with fig plus gif, and when I get to this point where I have to have the derivative of a composite function, I'm going to go off to the side, I'm going to find the derivative of that composite function, bring it back in, and now I can finish the product rule. So what is our outside function? It's something to the one-third, which is the same as the cube root, right? And the inside function is 9 minus 4x squared. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside function with respect to the inside function. And then I'm going to multiply that by the derivative of the inside function, which is negative 8x. So then I can take that back in over here, and I can say, all right, the derivative of, of the second function is 1 third. Actually, we'll just go ahead and, and combine those. Negative 8x over 3 times 9 minus 4x squared to the 1 third. So that is, that is the derivative. But we're not done because this is this is the derivative of this, right? And this is the derivative of that. Now, to use the actual product rule, we need to still do fig plus gif. What? Okay, so let's do fig. So that's 6x times 9 minus 4x squared to the 1 third plus gif. So that is negative 8x over 3 times 9 minus 4x squared to the 1 third times 3x squared. So this is the derivative, and I should be precise, f prime of x equals this entire thing right there, and we're not going to simplify it anymore. All right, let's look at some more. This has a lot of words and a lot of like notation, and sometimes it can be a little bit confusing, so let's figure out how this works. So first of all, I go to the end, and it says I'm trying to find the derivative of a composite function when x equals 2. Okay, so I'm trying to find the derivative of this composite function. So the first thing I'm going to think is I know I need to do the chain rule then, right? So the derivative of p 
of q of x is the derivative of the candy with the uh, peanut still intact, took me a minute, times the derivative of the peanut, right? So if I just plug in 2 here, because I'm looking where x equals 2, then I would have p prime of q of 2 times q prime of 2. So now I'm going to go back to all of those other things, that, those values that they gave me, and see if I have these values. Do I have q prime of 2? Yeah, q prime of 2 is right here. So q prime of 2 is 2. So I'm going to replace that with that, and then I still have p prime of q of 2 times 2. Okay, now do I know q of 2? So I had q prime of 2, but do I know q of 2? Yes, q of 2 is 3. So now I have p prime of 3 times 2. And now what is p prime of 3? So I go back up here. What is p prime, prime of 3 is right here. p prime of 3 is 4. So I can replace p prime of 3 with 4 times 2, and it is 8. And they actually gave you some extraneous information. They gave you stuff you didn't actually need to use to kind of throw you off. But really, it's just starting setting up and going down through the process.